What is going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of the Yamcast. Today is episode 84. 84. Episode 84 we're working on over here, which, by the way, if you guys are checking this out on YouTube, do me a favor. Hit the notifications button. Make sure you get notified of all the Yammy Noob updates. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you got all that good stuff. And if you are an avid Yamcast watcher, go to yammynoob.co. Join up. Become a member of the Discord. It's a ton of fun. You will not regret it. I guarantee it. It's a great time. It's one of my favorite things that I do here on Yammy Noob is interacting with all the degenerates who are currently watching this live as we do it because it comes out a week before you actually see it on YouTube. On today's news, we are checking out, apparently, the stupidest e-bike ever. <laughs> and we're also seeing the stupidest safety thingy ever. <laughs> Don't know what these are. I can't really quite remember. <laughs> and then we also have BMW ripping off Indian motorcycles as part of our news. Lots to talk about there. We're also going to be chatting in with our boys on the DM portion of the podcast about what is the right engine displacement. I know a lot of you might think that it's 1,300 cc's and turbocharged, but... Maybe it's a 125. Who knows? We're going to have a lot of discrepancies, I think, on the boys over there on the Discord. And then finally, we have a meme contest for all meme contests. This was like a, yeah. a super event, right? Yes. There there were so many different meme templates that got <laughs> thrown out, and that some got in, introduced halfway through the cycle. It's amazing. They, it's all over the place today. It's amazing. I'm very excited about the meme contest. And again, if you want to get in on that meme contest and have fun, you should definitely join on the Discord over on amynoob.co. Without further ado, let's jump in. Alrighty, Spite. What is the stupidest e-bike ever? The stupidest e-bike ever, I'm glad you ask, is the Energica Esprex, Experia, rather, not Espressa. The, es the Espressa. <laughs> Espressa yourself. I think Magic Toaster on our Discord just had his brain explode because we, we said Energica, <laughs> but we also said it's the worst thing ever. Now, let's, let's, let's be, you know, fair here. Uh, yes. There's a reason why we're saying it's the worst thing ever. Yes. So let's let's jump in. So diving on in, we have what looks to be an electric Tracer 900. Um, we've got some power figures that are a little bit further down. Let me pull these up here for you. Um, it is right here. 102 horsepower, 85 foot pounds of torque. So a good torquey okay. motorcycle. Okay. But they're usually electric bike torque figures. You dial it back by like 10 to 15. Yeah, torques. tapers off as the speed increases, all that weird stuff that we've expected. Yeah, so a claimed 3.5, 0 to 60, and a top speed of 112. I mean, it's going to be pretty decently zippy. Yeah. Um, it really, the more I look at it, the more I'm like, that is just straight up a Tracer 9. Yeah. Or, or it's like if a multi strata and a Tracer 9 had a baby. It's kind of like an old school multi. Yeah, old bit. school multi and Tracer 9 had a baby out of wedlock and it was dropped on its head, unfortunately. <laughs> 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 Gotta Be do it because, to him. because there's a very important thing about this motorcycle, right? Yes. So this motorcycle is a sport touring. Yes. Light, you know, 90 10, they claim here, where it's like you can hit yeah. up a fire road, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but they say that you are going to get 261 miles in the city, bullshit, and you're going to get 130 on the highway. I could see that. Yeah. That's fine. Um, they c claim a combined 160 miles of range, which is probably on the high side. Yeah. Uh, we actually did some real world testing with our zero, uh, I think in 2021, early 2021, where mm -hmm. I took it out. And I think that bike also claimed 130, 140 mile range. And me riding as a normal motorcyclist, I got like 75 out of it. Yes. Because it was a little cold that day and blah, blah, blah. And so this is the big problem with this motorcycle. It is ostensibly a big touring kind of thing, 160 miles of range. That's not going to cut it. No, it, ju it just doesn't work. Those numbers aren't great. They do claim a charge time, 80% uh, battery in 40 minutes. Not, not terrible. But that's you know? not great because yeah. you're not going to want to pull over every hour to get a sandwich. Yeah. You know? I yeah. Mean, that's that's lunch break Think time. about your Pan Am trip. I'd still be on the road. <laughs> you would have never made it back. <laughs> um, so you did that trip from San Diego down to Austin. Well, you started up more north, right? Where'd you start? I started in San Diego, went up to Fresno, over to Flagstaff, through um, Albuquerque? Albuquerque, down to Roswell, into Austin. Total mileage like two thousand or something, right? A little over two thousand, yeah. Yeah, 
you did at least five, 600 miles in a day. Didn't want to massively overdo it. One day I did have to overdo it. I did almost right. about seven. But I'm trying um, to think of this thing. Let's 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 ballpark it. It does about 120 miles in a charge, right? Yes. Because it's not it's not going to do 160, especially if you're just maxing on the highway, which is what a sport touring bike is kind of supposed to do. Yes. I don't really see the point of a sport touring bike that's just going to be poodling around at 15 miles per hour in the city. Yeah. Dumb. So let's say 120 miles per hour. Uh, not 120 miles per hour. 120 miles per per, per charge. Up. Yep. Um. That would be how many how many fill ups? It was twenty one hundred miles that I did. That's seventeen and a half charges. Seventeen and a half charges, and yep. so seventeen and a half times forty minutes, right? Times I'm trying to figure 40 out forty minutes. Uh, then divide that by sixty for hours. Yeah, is eleven twelve almost twelve hours of downtime. Almost twelve hours of downtime on an already pretty long trip. So I mean, that's the problem. Like you, you'd have to really limit your kind of sport touring. To maybe do like one 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 long haul on one charge, stop, sandwich break, blah blah blah, and then another long haul on another charge. Yes, and I guess it would charge through a normal like outlet or whatever. So the level two uh, is where you're you are going to get that uh, faster charge time. You're not going to get forty minutes on level one. You're not going to get that on one ten. Yeah, you're going to need to go up to two twenty two forty to actually get that quick charge time and you good good luck finding that in Ludlow, California. <laughs> yeah. You know, or I went through so many little pissant towns. Yeah. where you, you know, you couldn't even find a grocery store. It was yeah. all just Dollar General. They're not going to have charging <laughs> stations for it. Yeah, all level 2 charging stations not going to happen. So, uh this thing is is looking dead on arrival to me. Also, yeah. 573 pounds, baby. Yeah, that's a honking, stonking boy. Uh, and people are in this article saying it's, it's heavier, but it's heavy, but it's lighter than a BMW GSA. A BMW, yeah, it's not, not much of an achievement there. A GSA has like a nine gallon tank or whatever the hell. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I think this, uh, you know, cool that there's electric bikes coming in this space, but I don't know. It's not really quite competitive yet i would say no and that's that's why we've we went uh nuclear with this <laughs> title here but yeah it's not it's not a particularly intelligent thing i think it's going to be great for people commuting to the office oh yeah for but sure beyond that nope as a as a kind of in-town commuter bike pretty good I oh would yeah say. for sure electric no gas all the storage you need sure why not you know what's funny is here in austin i've actually seen it might be. It must be the same guy because there can't be that many people that own them. I've seen three Energicas in the past month. I would say, mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh, interesting. You know, they're around. They're around. Yeah. But we also have charging infrastructure here. We do. Yeah, we're in a very techy, you know, electric. I mean, there's more Teslas than you can shake a stick at in Austin. Yep. So, yeah. Anything else you want to say about this? Uh, well, what is this thing called? We didn't even get the name of it. It's the Xperia. Xperia. That's right. I forgot the name of it. I wanted to call it the Espresso. <laughs> Yep, yep. So, new adventure touring bike from Energica, but this is now going to move on to the stupidest technology? Yes, this is the stupidest safety system I've ever seen. All right, so <laughs> airbag parachute system is under development, baby. Yeah, so we talked last week about Honda's uh, self-driving motorcycle idea, that whole patent, and this was one that I wanted to catch on talking about that but we're doing this today as its own piece because i still think it's worth talking about because it's just ridiculous yeah um so if we scroll down here we've got oh these God. dudes who are all like jet piloted out <laughs> they literally <laughs> look like fighter pilots yeah um but they're making like airbag jeans airbag vests airbag sleeve stuff i mean you can see this dude with the yeah he looks like he just never skipped a leg day <laughs> ever <laughs> um he looks like you ever seen the Olympic cyclists who yes. are all like their bodies are all f***ed up and weird looking because they only like cycle at massive like watts. That's mm -hmm. how that's how this guy looks. Yeah, th this dude's legs are swole right here. Uh, so this is a company called Airbag, which okay, <laughs> and they've got a sub company or sub line within their uh, thing called Mo Cycle. Yeah, and they're trying to uh, work on this backpack that you wear. That deploys essentially two mini kiddie pools mm. above you. 
uh, at, to act as parachutes, right? So the article goes to, on to say here that uh, originally the idea of using parachutes to slow things down, it's not that out of the realm of reality. I mean, people do it with uh, the top fuel drag racers, as they yeah, say here, and jets well, do it all the time. well known to use a parachute to slow down. Uh, the only problem is that motorcyclists aren't going fast enough to cause the chute to inflate properly, and the, the rider can tumble... Yes. Um, and the lines can get all caught up. So what for a they've, parachute to work, you need a consistent stream of air and like movement, right? Or like yeah. a rider going down, you know, I've, I've been down before lots of times. It happens really fast. Yes. You go, zoop, and you're down. <laughs> yeah. So what this is all about is it uses basically a bunch of tubes, mm-hmm. right? A bunch of plastic tubes that fill up. Uh, and all of this is going to be firm, with, uh, you know, just super inflated with whatever gas they're using. This image just makes me think of, like, I must go, my people need me. Yeah, you know it looks I mean? like they like, should have big <laughs> rotors inside, and then you can just fly <laughs> just around. Go away, yeah. <laughs> uh, and so the, the point is this is supposed to deploy really fast, be behind a rider, and cause them to slow down and keep their feet going forward, right, mm. so that they don't tumble. Yeah. This, they're... Uh, theorizing that this is mostly just going to be aimed at track riders, which makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, on track, it would be more useful because you're sliding generally in a longer yeah. way. It would be more useful. On, yeah. on the street, things happen a lot faster. Um, so <laughs> this is just a pretty wild piece of technology that I see no point in. <laughs> But I think it's cool to test the boundaries and try new stuff. I mean, that's yes. how we got airbag suits that now work awesome for the racetrack, right? Mm-hmm. Have improved safety tremendously. And maybe one day we will see GP riders just freaking shooting out parachutes <laughs> and slowing down like that. I feel like Joanne Mir, he had that one where he slid and then just started walking. Mm-hmm. I feel like if he had the parachute, he would just like walked and started taking flight. <laughs> just <laughs> ran away into the sky, basically. Um yeah, I mean, it's it's super cool to see new technology like this come around. I think it's really important to try to push the envelope for safety, especially for motorcyclists. Yep. Because, um, I mean, you know, we say this a lot on the AMCAS. You can take a lot of steps to make motorcycling safer, especially for you guys at home. But just wear a helmet. That's number one. If you wear higher visibility clothes, number two. Uh, airbag suit, big number three for me. I think it's a great feature if you can afford it and if you want to put it in. A lot of them are dropping now, which is really cool. Yep. It's not even part of a whole suit, so... Shit, man, maybe one day we're all rolling around with parachutes on. I don't know. Could you just imagine that world? Just, you know. Ima- so, first of all, I have a couple of concerns. First of all, how big are the uh, canisters of compressed air <laughs> no, that right. you're going to have to be carrying around to fill this? Yeah. Um, what it, I'm assuming they'll probably be charged with, like, nitrogen, which is which I think compresses mm. a little harder. Nitrogen's always the answer. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. And so, you're going to be just rolling around with freaking probably two canisters of super compressed gas on you when theoretically that stuff could hit the ground and explode yeah so that's a little eh. i wonder how the alpine stars tech airbag suits work i actually don't know um they have a couple of sensors but is it a small uh like for example like whenever you have to refill a bicycle tire or a tube you have a little tiny thing of compressed air or whatever it is, mm-hmm. I can't remember, CO2, and you spin it and it releases it on the charge and it fills up the tube. Is that how the tech air system works? Pretty much, It's a yeah. tiny little can somewhere? Mm-hmm. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, the the turtle one, I remember Fortnite made a video about this, and there's that one that literally looks like uh, what this guy's wearing here. Yeah. Um, and it, you That's can the, the recharge light or whatever, right? The heat light, The one yeah. that goes over. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen um, that one. that one, uh, literally uses, I think not the 30 gram, but the, I think it's a 50, the one 50? of the big boys. Yeah. And you just plug it in and it's ready to go. And it's just on a hair trigger. Yeah. And you attach yourself to your bike. Mm-hmm. And then when that cord goes, which this guy's actually wearing the cord right here. Yeah. When you fly off it. Psh, yep. Yeah. And they inflate instantly yep. pretty much. So it is a cool piece of technology, these airbags, but the parachute, it's like, how, how is that actually going to be useful on the street? Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Well, we'll keep an eye on parachute technology. I may need one for my Turbo Hayabusa at one point. Oh, yeah. <laughs> for, for my nasty street pull, just pull the chute, <laughs> let it go. <laughs> 
I think at the point where your vehicle has a parachute, you've lost your marbles. Yes, for sure. Any a car, bike, whatever you whatever you're piloting, if it has a parachute, con- reconsider your life. You know, yeah, something you've, you've gone has gone wrong. Uh, but let's move on to the last bit of news. Last piece of news: BMW straight up copying TVS's Apache R. All right. So. Do they- What's the, what's the relationship between BMW and TVS? Do we know? So BMW, uh, TVS makes the G310s. Okay. So the G310R is uh, this guy. Yes, so, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And that's a, that's just straight up Indian made motorcycle. Yep. Um, I'm not sure if it's a branded TVS bike, like what the Double R is, but this is just straight up. This is the new bike. Um. It's a BMW TVS up double R. Uh, scroll up a bit. If this is mm-hmm. going to be the bike, it's got uh, radial discs or radial calipers. Look yes, it does. By Bree. Upside down fork. Mm-hmm. G310 double R race. <laughs> yep. That's kind of cool. The fairings kind of look like a big bike. Yeah, they they look like the M package. They basically copied it. It looks a lot like how when Yamaha had the R3 and they, they refreshed the design and made it more like our bike. And people were like, oh, hell yeah. Like, it looks like a little baby R1. And then they made the monster graphic version yeah. of it. Yeah, that was super cool. Yeah, I mean, those sell well. Yeah. And so here we have the bike that it's actually based on, or that it rather is. Uh, is the, uh, This is the TVS Apache Double R, which has a surprising piece of technology that you might not expect. That's the dashboard. Whoa. Weird. It looks like the Desert X's dashboard. It's like a smartphone. Mm-hmm. Interesting. That's, that's that, a that, beefy t- TFT on there. That is. That almost looks like a system where you drop in your phone and then it would be the dashboard. But uh, that's that's a peculiar dashboard. Mm-hmm. I've never seen that before. And you can see the switch clusters over here. Um, that's a lot of buttons. It is a, a lot of buttons. Makes like thirty-five horsepower or whatever. <laughs> yeah, they're claiming thirty-three point five horsepower Lord. and. 18.4 pound feet foot pounds top speed of 99 no, miles it's saying, an hour it's saying that in urban and raid modes those drop to 18 so it's 20 oh. foot pounds of torque and 33.5 horsepower um claimed so my god at the at the at the rear wheel probably like 28 horsepower and 18 foot pounds of torque yikes yikes um damn <laughs> Zero to sixty in 7.2 seconds Ouch! lightning fast <laughs> um it's easy for us to laugh, though, because... That's okay, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I mean, it, these are... It's very clear that this motorcycle is not meant for the American market, which makes me wonder, since we do have the G310 lines here, yeah. will we see this one? Because this is the only way we're th- going to be able to see an I Apache I feel like they would America. get laughed out of the market. At this point, yeah. Honestly, when you have Ninja 400s and the, and the new RC390, have you seen mm-hmm. that thing? Yeah. It's crazy. It's really nice. Um, this would get just laughed out of the market. Yeah. This this would be the new uh, GSX 250R, basically the new Weapon Boy. Mm-hmm. But it would be even worse because it'd be so flashy. But Suzuki did make the GSX 250R in the XR livery graphic, which I think is hilarious. That was I honestly when we saw when we got ours red, I was like, oh, I kind of yeah. wanted the the, the XR the XR one. Because <laughs> I say what you will, the XR livery on bikes looks awesome. It's super cool. Yeah, the Jixxer thou with the XR with the the yellow highlights and stuff it's it's really sweet but uh all new bmw all new quote unquote bmw g310 double r another joint venture from tvs and bmw it really um, feels yeah. lately with all of the stories we've been covering with qj cf moto and tvs that there's a big push for the eat cheap easy to build motorcycles that have these cool flashy features that can be sold for a lot more than they're costing to make, yeah. uh, but still come in r- relatively cheap compared to the competition. It's a volume play, man. Like it's it's why Royal Enfield's been so successful. They build a bike that is attractive looking at a low price point to a f- ton of people. Mm-hmm. That's what they do, right? Yeah. And it's what Yamaha and Kawasaki have done with their Ninjas and R bikes, respectively. You know, mm-hmm. for the R three and the Ninja four hundred. Um, you build a good looking bike at a cheap price point. Yeah. M- maybe your margins like 15, 20% on those, but you sell them to millions of people. You make good, make good money, you know? Yeah. Get your ROI. But are their fairings claimed to be inspired by sharks? <laughs> <laughs> that is my favorite line out of this whole thing. 
Yeah. Yeah, so uh, where does it say that? Right there, under the fairing, which is claimed to be inspired by sharks. Yeah. The tubular steel frame is identical to that of the G310G. It's uh, interesting R. that the frame would be inspired, claimed to be inspired by sharks. So we don't know if it actually is or is not, but maybe this uh, writer for this article just says, you know, hey, it kind of looks like a shark, so I'm going to say it's claimed to be inspired by a shark. <laughs> I feel like most motorcycles are either sharks or wasps or... Some other predator creature, birds even. A lot of Ducatis look like birds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, this has a little bit of the old uh, R6 kind of look about it. A little bit. Like from the front, or maybe the ZX6 a little bit more. A little bit, yeah. For me, the front end with the with the white strip and the red kind of looks like a special edition Ducati a yep. little bit. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm all for getting more people on two wheels, and you know, if they're too afraid to jump up to a big bad bike, or if, if in, in this case, this market probably cannot... <laughs> Uh, afford a lot of those big bad bikes bikes like this are cool and it gives you the feeling of owning a cool sport bike which is what people that's what motorcycling is all about you're selling yeah. a feeling you know yeah. and if the feeling of a cool sport bike is here more power to them i yep. love to see it so just a neat little story i think it's odd though that we are seeing so much branding of these non-factory bikes by factory manufacturers yeah again give it five years and every every bike's gonna be some chinese bike that's branded some european bike you know i think it's a matter of time till aprilia does something like that and yeah. the goose is doing it yeah aprilia might ducati or do you think they're too uh vain? i think mv is probably too you know but mv's doing it i i think they're they're, they're probably gonna walk away from it at some point really? they're gonna be like this is just just not it's not emozione. It's not us. Yeah. I, I maybe. It's it strikes me as so odd that they're doing that. You yeah. Know? And certainly Ducati would never do that. I don't think they'd so. They'd go bankrupt before, again <laughs> yeah. before they did that. For sure. Yeah, for sure. They they would never rebrand an Indian bike. That's for sure. Um All right, folks, that's the news for this week. We're now going to move on to the DM portion of the podcast. Stick around. We are going to be talking about the perfect engine displacement for the street. We have enlisted the help of all of our Discord boys who have been absolutely bombarding us with DMs, uh, trying to probably simp for their chosen motorcycle, saying it is the best engine displacement for the street. Um, Spike, what do you think is the best engine displacement for the street? 639 cc single cylinder 639 693 oh you said 639 i was Whoops. like oh, you, six, it was like a little it. smaller than i remembered ah okay. oh well it always is like that huh? it's a little smaller than you always remember <laughs> such a shame yeah uh no obviously obviously i'm a simp for my 690 but yep. uh i do honestly believe that the thumper offers a lot of great benefits for the street yeah um it's really simple. It's really easy to work with. It doesn't generate a ton of heat. Yep. Um, it, it doesn't sound as great. That's the one downside. They kind of suck. Yeah. Uh, sound wise. But I think that they're a lot of fun. They're light. Um, and personally, I think if you're looking for a good street motorcycle, it tends to be within the six, 700 CC range. Yeah. Yeah. I would agree. Um, I think I have, two answers for this one before we get to the discord boys so the kind of like optimal answer for me would be something like you were saying like an rs660 style engine yes something between 600 to 800 cc's makes about 100 horsepower it's realistically all the power you could really use on the street and you'll be happy with it makes good torque makes a great sound blah 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 is probably my pick for like an ideal street engine uh, we we're probably going to be doing a 210660 as a giveaway bike later this year. Spoiler alert. Oh, that sounds so good. Um, and I, I just think it's going to be a, a perfect motorcycle. I rode it at Coda last year, and I was like, this is a perfect motorcycle. And I'm very excited about it. But my other answer is, if you're not looking at this kind of maximally optimal thing, I really think, and this might be a weird answer, you know, I don't think you'll see this coming. I really think that like an unkillable old school air-cooled 250 single is the best. Hmm. If you got something like an XT250, it's so dead simple. It's air-cooled. It's a little single-cylinder thing. Yeah, it's carbureted. That kind of sucks, but carbs are kind of indestructible too, especially if you can get one with a kickstart. Yeah. That's like, that bike will never die, and it'll get you everywhere you need to get to, and it's going to work great. You know what it sounds like you need? A Rebel 250? KLR 650. <laughs> Everything you were saying... <laughs> 
with an extra 20 horsepower. Yeah, and EFI nowadays. And which EFI, is but cool. you can still get you can get a lot of them carbureted. You can get a lot of them carbureted for nothing. That's true. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's see what the boys had to say as we see them shit posting in the Yamcast. <laughs> <laughs> Always fun to see the shit posts. All right, diving in, we have Battle up first. Battle says 600 cc seems appropriate for street riding because it allows long distance comfy at highway speeds. It's an all right for cruising around town. RS660 for real. 600 cc that to me sounds like inline four, and that's the last engine I would choose. Oh honestly. my god, yeah. That's no, other terrible. than like a CBX with like some big six cylinder, multi cylinder thing. No, dude. No, 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 no. It's all wrong. It's all mm-hmm. wrong. Uh, the, definitely a little bit of a meme there, but. Yeah, you don't want the 600. Uh, Next up, we got Wyatt. So Wyatt says, if you ignore the 600 Super Sport class, 500, 700 cc is the sweet spot for American streets when it comes to modern engines. The range gets you anywhere from 45 to 110 horsepower, Interceptor 650 to RS 660. That's actually wild that the 650 Interceptor and the RS 660 has a delta of 65 horsepower. Yep. (laughs) Damn. (laughs) With most falling in around 60 to 80 horsepower, and that's really the sweet spot as long as the bike is under 500 pounds. For engines that aren't modern like my Honda or bikes that are heavy like my Harley, 750 plus is where it's at. Basically, I think power to weight ratio is more important than displacement, and that ratio is basically an SP650 or an MT07. Hard to disagree. Yeah. Hard to disagree. And I agree, the power to weight ratio is more important. That's why a lot of Harley guys get in their brain like, yeah, brother, I need an 1800cc engine. It's like, yeah, because your bike weighs 900 pounds. Yeah, if you lost a lot of weight, it'd be a little bit more impressive. Yeah. Uh, Moving on, we have Somatic. Somatic here just says, water world love with the meme. Not quite what we're looking for. Moving on. Moving on. JM Fire. JM Fire says, best displacement has to be a 675cc. No more, no less. I'm not biased at all, I swear. It sounds like he might be a little bit biased. I think he's a little bit biased, but I, I do agree that 675 is a sweet engine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next up, we got Kegamizen. Kegamizen says, the ideal engine for the street is somewhere between five to 800 cc. So a lot of people are kind of falling this right now, you know? I think if you're really a dollar-driven human being like most of us are, yeah. It really, you're not going to see an amazing change in your life if you're going to spend a ton of money and you're going to spend a little bit more to get a little bit more, right? Yeah. I think at that, at about 110 horsepower, maybe 115, you start seeing how much money you're throwing at a motorcycle and the, the value you get out of it sort of taper off. Yeah. You know? Yeah, definitely. So uh, seven round burst is next. Seven Round Burst says, configuration first, because I think that's where the real conversation is, in my opinion. I've had a parallel twin, a V-twin, two different triples, and an I-4 for street bikes, and IMO, triples are the best street bikes. Traded my MT-10 for a current 21 MT-09 SP, and don't regret it a bit. Nice. I still We still got to ride one of these new MT-09s, dude. Jesus. They look so nice. Yeah, they look like they're a lot of fun. Spite mentioned downgrading during the pre-show, and I guess that's my case. I really, really just wanted to go back to a triple. Perfect street configuration, in my opinion. Displacement, obviously, I'd pick between 800 and 900, but 650 class is a strong second. Um, I mean, strong case to be made for the MT-09 class of bikes. Duke 890, Z900, all those. It's like, what more do you want, you know? It's the the best. Yeah, those are like if you want a proper fast street bike. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want want a bike that is a great street offering, but also... Real fast. Yeah. Proper fucking quick, you know? Yeah. And that begs the question as to why stuff like the Ducati V4 SP Street Fighter exists or the MT-10. I mean, it all boils down to dick swinging, I think. That, that, that's, yeah. that's all it is, you know? <laughs> Which, you know, then you get to the point of like, well, maybe, you know, the uh, Jixis Thou and the CBR-1000 or CB-1000R have the right of it. Yeah, because they're they're still pretty fast. They're like they're on, outside the nine hundred range. I think the Jixis is one hundred and fifty at the Something crank. Like that. Yeah, and the CB is one hundred and forty at the crank. Mm-hmm. So that's a it's, lot. It's still potent. Yeah, yeah, but you're gonna be able to get a little bit more out of it. Yeah. Next up, we got Vince82. Vince82 says, The best displacement for road, whatever makes 95 to 115 horsepower at less than 10,000 RPM. There's a bunch of bikes in that category from the MT-09 to the Duke 890. 
passing from 1000cc twins. RS slash 260 are in there too. It's not the displacement, it's the dyno chart. I think that's super important. Yeah, like where's the power being made? That's why we said inline fours kind of freaking suck for the street. Um, you got to wind them out. But uh, at the same time, you and I both love street squid on the ZX6, right? Oh, it's so much fun. So it's like, uh, this is tough. It's tough to, to say which, which way to go. Because uh, I want... love chasing the power in an inline four too. I, I do love that. But it's, you can't do that safely on no, the street. No, you can't. You can't. And I would still rather take an RS660 over a ZX6. Yeah. I would. It's a better bike. Well, it sounds like, though, if he wants 95 to 115 at less than 10,000 RPM, what you really want is you want yourself like Fat Bob. <laughs> that's, that's you know. Those bikes don't make that much power. 117, 117 cubic inches peak torque at like 3,500 <laughs> RPM. <laughs> Red line at 55. Yeah. Perfect right there. <laughs> Yeah, I guess so. I'm trying to think of something else that makes that much power at less than 10,000 RPM. Uh, I mean, I think... Oh, what's the bike I rode the other day um, that I thought that about it? It redlined a little earlier than that. Was that the uh, um, the Thruxton? Yes. Yeah, the Thruxton. Yeah, that bike makes that exact power. I think it's 105 horsepower, less than 10,000 RPM. Yeah. I love that engine. It was such a sweet little oh, bike. Oh, so good. So, so that 1200. I really want to try the Scrambler 1200. Yeah. So sweet. Next up, we got Lucky Blue Wrench. Lucky Blue Wrench. I don't think there's a single perfect engine displacement as proven by Harley. Displacement does not matter, but 70 to 100 horsepower is definitely the sweet spot. So probably 700 cc. He says, uh, proven by Harley Davidson uh, in this case. Um, what, do you, what do you think he means by that? I think he means that you want to, you want to be in seventy to hundred. He's a Harley simp, being like, "Yeah, get a big engine, something that's a lot of torque." Yeah, and you want to be right there. He says oh. it means Harley engines don't make <laughs> for power. <laughs> it's, true, it's true; they really don't. Yeah, the that, new ones do. The, the new, new ones, ones are pretty do. Good. Rev Max, those seem pretty good. Really want to try that nine nine seventy five. Really want to try that one. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna bug our guy at Harley for that. Stank Nooner says, best CC Yamaha CP2. Next question. And yes, I am literally now a day two owner of one. There we go. <laughs> there you go. See, it happens, folks. You buy a motorcycle, instantly start simping and parroting for it. as if And, and unsolicited as well. <laughs> uh here we, oh, he's not talking about the turbo boost. Yeah. Full Metal Corgi says, the best displacement for the street is, regrettably, no displacement. Right now, electric would fit 99% of my needs, but let's be honest, motorcycles are never about what we need. So, 1,300 oh, cc and 8 pounds of boost is street ability minimum. <laughs> this is one of our guys on Discord who actually has a turbo boost, but can't get it to run, unfortunately. Where have I heard that before? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, sad. So, that, that's interesting. Um... So no engine configuration. An electric would be the best configuration for most people. I think that's true. Honestly, it's true. I know we love the bang noises and all the chattering and the dry clutches and the engine sounds, but potato, potato, potato. Yeah, whatever your whatever your poison is, but uh, yeah, honestly, for people who just they go to work, they come back, they do a weekend ride, an electric would do all that, and it would do all that with the good torque in the middle and blah blah blah. It's, yeah, right. It would work. But no emozione. No emozione. No brap brap. Uh, orange 990. You can't sit at a light and just wick it. You can't no. wick the throttle. You just yeet yourself right in the back <laughs> of a Prius. Yeah. Predictably, I think right at 999 cc's is perfect. Realistically, I feel that 110 to 120 horsepower and 60 to 80 foot pounds of torque fits the bill perfectly. Enough power to have some decent legs without becoming unusable. Yeah. It's fair. I feel like in an adventure bike configuration, 120 horsepower is stupid. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a it's lot. A, it's a lot. lot of juice. I mean, to the point where the Pan Am needs to have an off-road mode that manicures the power because it makes too much damn power. Mm -hmm. well, it does so a great job of manicuring the power. It but does. It's like a, you need a nuclear supercomputer to do all that <laughs> Yeah. Uh, what's that quote? It's like anything over 25 horsepower off-road is just wheel spin. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. So, but Except on the KLR. I cannot get that thing to break the back tire. <laughs> really? No. <laughs> It just revs so slow, dude. I have to like rev it up and gotta, dump the I gotta clutch. ride the Kellar one of these. I still haven't ridden it. Yeah. We gotta do a proper like first ride with it. <laughs> we should uh you wanna go out to Hidden Falls with it, right? Sure. That'd be fun. Yeah. 
a fun thing to do with it. I also got to take a moment and just admire Orange's commitment to the bit. It's insane. I told him earlier, I was like, I am honestly impressed at your relentless commitment to this bit. <laughs> it's just every day, almost hourly. If I'm like in the dirt bike channel or anywhere else, he's there 990 simping. I'm like, yeah. dude, like, come on, man. <laughs> at some point, you got to talk about something else. But he just won't break. If, yep, he won't do it. Uh, next up, we've got Beanball Sub. Beanball Sub, excellent username. Obviously, a 1299cc turbo in line four. I'd say 472 to 800 ish. So the 471cc CBR 500 isn't included. LOL. I really <laughs> like my Spark Pellin 701 for the street. Super manageable, good passing power, but still enough to get in a little bit of trouble. Um, yeah, that's, yeah, 701, 690 engine. Honestly, very solid choice for street bike. Yeah. Very solid. Um, gotta love the torque curve on that. Yeah. That's, that's really fat. what gets me. It's bad. Kill Once Oh, you, Jesus. Uh, oh, my God. Once you get your 690 back and with the airbox mod, I got to do a ride on that too. Yeah, That'd it, so it should sweet. just rip once yeah. that's on. All righty, folks. Kilroy here with a long one. 600-ish is the best for the street for a multitude of reasons. 1,000cc bikes get hot. It's a massive pain in the ass to ride around with your gooch feeling like it's getting pan-seared in the Satan's unholy quartet. Yep. <laughs> nice. Number two, they are cheaper. 1,000cc is like buying a Lamborghini when you live in NYC. You'll never be able to ride it in a way that uses up its full power on the street. A 600cc is like buying a sports car. Still crazy fast, but you can actually use the majority of the power in normal riding conditions. Debatable. Uh, smaller displacement bikes are straight dookie. As a card carrying a thick boy, riding anything smaller than 600cc makes me feel like a clown riding around in a little pit bike. Uh, four is 600 cc torque, baby. Number five is that sound, though. Yeah, what torque on 600? <laughs> uh, number six is because it's in accordance with the scriptures of Bolby Stroganovsky. As he commands, so too it shall be done. It should be known that I picked up my Trident 660 on Thursday, and so of course it is the most superior bike ever. Um, a lot of what Kilroy said here about 600s, I don't think holds true. However, the heat would love to talk about that. Yes, that's a big one. People don't think about that when they get a high horsepower, hopped up motorcycle. Them bastards run hot. They run so hot. Dude, when you got a bike pushing out 200 plus horsepower, you're like, you got to keep it moving. Mm -hmm. You got to keep it running. I mean, so much so that the fire blade was like, if you don't keep me running, I will blow up. <laughs> and it does. <laughs> but that's because Honda, in their infinite wisdom, ran a rubber hose behind the four titanium headers. Honda does nothing wrong. <laughs> Honda's perfect. And they're not safe. <laughs> Um, yeah, that was, I can't believe when that happened. Um, Jesus Christ, what a disaster that was. That was, that was a very interesting day <laughs> <laughs> of me loading up in the truck with me and you and dropping off and being like, am I going to have to buy another fire blade? Like <laughs> this is a, this is a disaster. There um, were so many unanswered questions at the end of that day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so many people in the videos were like you, it was your fault. You did something wrong. I was like, Oh my God. No, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> it was just the bike. Yeah. Uh, the Dr. Zero, somebody who probably has a DRZ. The Dr. Zero depends on the street riding you're talking about. Around town hopping around, you can't possibly beat a 300 to 500 cc dual sport enduro slash sumo. Let's get some snaps for this man. If you're doing any highway riding, you're probably going to want 600 cc plus. I agree. If you're bopping around town, not much highway, get that dual sport life, baby. Oh, yeah. they're so much fun. You just jump over curbs, jump over anything. Like I, I, I ride my Husqvarna like an idiot, mm -hmm. and it's so much fun. It's re it, they, they reward you when you do that. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing with my supermoto. Whenever I was, uh, it, before I had somebody try to break it and steal it six months ago, <laughs> I was really starting to learn how to wheelie off a red light. I was really enjoying it. And then yeah. somebody tried to steal it six months ago. <laughs> God, uh. it's been so long. Maybe this is just your year without the 690. I'm so sad. Yeah, I've been it's... stuck with this, the KLR. <laughs> The uh, KLR, every time you go around, it's like, oh, boy, we're going on a ride. You're like, shut up. <laughs> shut up. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, Basil's up next. As if you don't ride a bunch of different bikes here in the shop and you're not spoiled for choice. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. I got some options. As if you're just sitting around at the KLR. Basil says, I know this will pain you to hear, but around town and on the street, 650cc parallel twin is a great size. That does not pain me at all. All hail the great or insert any Kawasaki model you enjoy dunking on here. Now, no, I will say even, and this is a bit of a spoiler because if you're watching the Amcast, this is deep. I'll give you a little bit of a spoiler. Even a Royal Enfield Interceptor 650 motor, I would take it over Kawasaki 650. Yes. 
I would 100%. do it. More character, more interesting. I would do it. Sorry. I don't want a fucking vacuum cleaner for an engine. Nope. Uh, Moving on. Yeah, no. You're just smart. <laughs> Go away. Uh, Detlaf is next. Detlaf, 1299cc with the turbo, of course. Very nice. On a serious note, I think around 650cc is the 210660. Yes, yes, it is. Now, I will say, uh, we both think that the Turbo Hayabusa is actually surprisingly dailyable. You can <laughs> yes. actually ride it. Like, you really can. Except we talk about a bike that gets hot. <laughs> Jesus, yeah. <laughs> um, that bike's running pretty cool right now, though, with all the changes and modifications done to really? it. Really? Yeah. It sits It sits. the temp gauges under midway all the time. Hmm. Never, never. I'm, I've never taken it out for an hour in 108 degree weather. I think that would have caused it to I'm not. I'm not trying to get stuck on the side of the highway with it, but yeah, that wouldn't be great. <laughs> uh, MT Simp is next. All right, here we go. MT Simp. Okay, so the best displacement for the street, which you might find unsurprising when you look at my profile picture, is the 800-900 cc range. These bikes typically have 110 to 130 horsepower, provide enough torque and power to have fun without getting bored. MT09, for example, has a triple, some top-end punch, four-cylinder low-down torque. I would have said 650, but those bikes often have twins, which get a bit annoyingly vibrational at higher highway speeds and aren't as smooth. On top of that, build quality on 650s are often very cheap. On the other hand, no one needs a honkin' stonkin' 1300cc turbo busa, Except for Yam, of course. How, how sweet. Um, I do agree. No one needs a turbo Hayabusa, but I do think everyone should ride one at least one time in their life. You need to experience it. It's life-changing. Yeah. You like will I, realize that nothing else matters. Like, I took it up and down the block here, and I was just like, Jesus! <laughs> it's just <laughs> disgustingly aggressive. Um, yeah, and it's just cool just flying by people and just hearing the turbo just goes... <laughs> You said that I was coming back towards you this way, and all I could hear is just turbo sound, yep. right? Because the dump pipe's going the wrong way. Yeah. But the, the turbo was on this you side of the bike. You just hear a whistle. Yeah. That's so sick. Uh, next up, we got Alan Robertson. Alan Robertson says, I would say a 900 is perfect. 900? Right on the dot. What would you get? Like a Honda Hornet, maybe? I mean, that's pretty perfect. That's pretty good. Yeah. Of the inline four, is not bad. We are seeing a... a pretty good separation into two camps which makes me wonder if we should have like a poll and mm, see yeah. what people think between the 650 and the 900 class yeah because we had that list that was 650s and 900s in the middleweight yeah but i wonder if the 650 boys might be able to beat up on the 900 boys because the that last guy, MT Simp, he mentioned that the 900s have a little bit more build quality, which yep. they do. Yep, they do. Yeah. Um, but the 650s, they're cheaper, and they're just the, in a value-driven world. Yeah. Like for example, you ride a Duke 890 or a Street Triple 765 versus an MT07. Yeah. Night and day for the build quality. Night and day. But are you having a significantly better time? I don't think so, honestly. Like yeah. I, I mean, for me, for the street riding, an MT07 is like this is great. Mm -hmm. What else do you really need, you know? That's why I still stick with my Scrambler. It's a lot of fun. Yep. I've uh, not ridden that bike in so long. i got to pull it out of the, the garage here. If it will even start. You, you It'll don't, start. Come on. You, you know how tough that bike is. <laughs> Come on. You don't look at a Ducati for a week and they start falling apart. Dude, my Desert Sled is it's it's not like a it's not like other Ducatis, okay? <laughs> 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 it's a hold. I mean, you. I've been that bike so many times. It's yeah. a tough son of a bitch. <laughs> it really does just keep on ticking. Yeah. Um, I think you just don't ride it because you don't want to pay for another Desmo service. Honestly, yeah. I'm just like, eh, well, I'll take the Husky, which instead is even worse on maintenance. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, VTX Stravaganza is next. VTX says 1800 cc's is perfect for highway and city riding with Ooh, a laughing a emoji. Big boy on the a VTX. Big VTX boy. That's interesting too. Is so the the cruiser guys who are into the big bikes, right? Mm -hmm. They're always talking about the 1800s, the 1900 cc's. And again, it's just because those bikes are so damn heavy. They need a big ass engine. And I don't know. I'd always rather be on a lighter, simpler bike. Always. One thing that I do find kind of interesting about these motorcycles is how efficient they are at getting rid of the heat that they are generating. That is true. Yeah. Is it be maybe it's because they're just so low compression. They're not working very hard. At that all. has to be. You know. Um, but like you, you sit. They get warm while you're just idling. Yeah. But the second you get moving, they cool off pretty darn quick. Yeah. It also causes them to idle at like 800 <laughs> RPM. <laughs> 
There's some of those Harleys where you can count the cycle. You okay, bro? You gonna keep running? It's like you, you have that little moment of panic between yep. each cycle. Oh boy, Honaha Yamada. Oh, okay, okay, it was a little shorter this time. Thank you. All right. So other than 69 cc mini bikes and 420 cc dirt bikes, it obviously <laughs> depends on a lot of things. I personally think the cruisers should be between 650 and 1200 cc's and 400 and 700 cc's for nakeds and maybe scramblers. Much more than that, as we know, could bring the more dangerous behavior. Even though we need and we all want more. Also, limiting the CCs may push manufacturers to refine the engines instead of falling back on displacement. Cough, KTM, cough. LOL, take care. So the displacement thing is actually not necessarily the manufacturer just being like, ah, oh, screw it, we'll just make a bigger engine. It's actually emissions-based. Yeah. So that's why you're seeing MT-09, Duke 890s, all those kind of creeping up because emissions are kind of blasting these little bikes. And why 600s are not going to be around anymore. Nope. Yeah. Crying shame. It is a shame, yeah. I, I think I, we're like five years away from there just not being any more of them. I pulled the ZX6 out yesterday. I was riding it with the fresh lines. I was just like, oh, this is so good. <laughs> so much fun. Oh, yeah. On track, those you're just like, yep, it's perfect. <laughs> Go rip. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, Toaster Stridswagen is next. Toaster Stridswagen says, I think that the KTM 690 single puts up a good argument for the best engine. Good power with really low weight would make a hoot of a bike. Husqvarna and KTM both offer different models, attracting different riders in the Enduro, Supermoto, and the Vitpillin, Spartpillin models. That's a great point, actually, how KTM and Husky, you got the 701 Enduro, the 701 Supermoto, the Spartpillins. I mean, they put that engine in so many different styles of bikes. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. It's a really modular engine when you think about it, too, because if you ride the 690 SMCR versus Whitney's Spartpillin, Mm Mm-hmm. The Svartpillin revs out very differently yeah. than my Supermoto does. My Supermoto just, like, smacks you in the face. Yeah. The 701 rides like a naked bike. Yeah. Which is kind of cool that they were able to make that engine be more um, modular, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rarest Mally is next. Rarest Mally says 630 to 650 cc's because they have the passing power and highway speeds, but does traffic well and around town stuff well. And it says, yay, yam shaved the stash. Had to get some stash comment in there. Uh, Contrary to popular belief, not everything I do here on the channel uh, is related to the channel. Sometimes I'm just doing stuff for fun and for me. <laughs> um, but I do appreciate it. Uh, yeah, again, 650, 6, 6, I don't know, like a 630. I don't know what bike that would be. But 650, definitely in that camp. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Although the KLR 652 cc's dog slow. Yes, it is. Like that one is pushing it. We got to race the the Enfield in the KLR. Yeah. That'll be close. Mm-hmm. That'll be close. I'll take the bags off. Yeah, take, the, ba- take the bags off. I think if we get me and Josh on both bikes to really equalize the weight, mm-hmm. I think it'll be close. Yeah. Uh, Ride Red is up next. Ride Red says, would argue displacement is irrelevant without considering weight. Torque to weight ratio is a more important thing for street riding. My 998cc in line four is not the correct answer for most. <laughs> um, yeah, again, the weight is a big is a big qualifier there. Like, do you remember the 1098 and its torque and oh just God. how ridiculous it was? You know, savage, that savage bike. motorcycle, Super Dukes, savage bikes. <laughs> um, yeah, I remember the time we had the Super Dukes out here, and we pulled a U-turn, Yep. and you got on the gas, and it just went, Aah! and I, I just saw both your feet just hit the floor like skis, and I'm like, I think Spite's about to loop a loner bike. <laughs> I, I honestly was not expecting that. You just that saw to, the sky. Yeah, I was just like, oh, I'm looking at the sky now. <laughs> it happened so fast on yeah, that bike, dude. too. Yeah. Like, it was so fast, to the yeah. point where I didn't even realize what was happening. Yeah. <laughs> I remember just seeing it. I think I was riding. It was me, you, and Josh because yep. we were doing a video with the Super Duke. It was at Whitney, yeah. And I just like, oh, I was like, he's gonna loop it. <laughs> <laughs> you just got off the gas and brought it back down. Yeah, that was a that was an interesting experience for sure. But I love that bike just because yeah. it is so savage. But it is the wrong choice. Yeah, for just about everybody. Yep. Uh, Breadneck is next. Redneck says, everyone knows that 1,300 cc's is best, Busa is best. Only joking, 650 is my answer. Just enough to be fun, but not enough to get you in too much trouble. 650 boys coming out in in, in droves. In droves. Yeah. yeah really I feel through. like the 650 class, the, the 650 camp is really winning here. Yeah. Uh, Infernal Saxon. 
Infernal Saxon. Displacement for the road, anywhere from 49 cc's to Lockheed Martin. <laughs> it says, realistically, 650. Another 650 boy here. Uh, ringing that bell. Love to see it. Uh, N Harvey 17. N Harvey 17. The best engine for street riding is the 650 class, except for the Ninja or Z650. You can use all the power without nearly shitting yourself in traffic, but more than enough juice for passing. By the way, love the brake pad and fluid change video today. Hey, look at that. Nice. Lovely. Also, that Thank was a you. good one. We worked hard on that one. Uh, Jared is next. Jared says, I don't think any displacement is perfect. I would much rather look at the power figures of bikes. Anything that has 90 to 130 horsepower and 60 to 85 foot-pounds is best. Dot, 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 Yamaha CP4. That bike makes a whole lot more power than that. A whole lot. Yeah. CP4 makes like 165, I think, right now, and 80-something foot-pounds of torque. Uh, that is a monster, monster bike. Yes, it is. Uh, go away, Google. Go away. Um, we let's do. I think uh, the lava melon might the be our last melon, one. Yes. All right. Lava melon says the perfect displacement is whatever the SV650 is, and then also tell Whitney she needs a backup system and bra activate windows. <laughs> we will never activate no. windows. It's just part of the meme now, guys. Come on. Windows is going to stay unactivated over here on the Yamp Cast. Uh, we should really do a poll or put up some sort of video or something about. That 650 versus 900 class. I think yeah. I think there's going to be a big big divide here. Mm-hmm. I, I think those who are it's... a little more squidly want the 900s, you mm-hmm. know, and then those who are more like, eh, I, I know what I'm about. They get the 650s. I'm thinking that that would end up being like 55-45. Yeah. Weighted to the 650s. I think so, too. That's yeah. my kind of read on it. Yeah, we could put up a poll. But uh, that's going to wrap up the DM portion of the podcast here, folks. Remember, if you like the DM portion, you want to participate in the DM portion, join up over on Yamini.co. As little as $5 a month. Discord access, all kinds of great stuff, behind-the-scenes look, all that good stuff. I'm actually doing weekly live streams on my own now with the boys, too, calling it the Yam Cam. So go and check that out. We're not going to move on to the meme contest. This one ought to be pretty good. Yep. Pretty good meme contest. All right, everyone, welcome to this week's meme contest. This is definitely a highlight of my day when we have a meme contest here on the Discord and the Yamcast. This week's meme contest was a little bananas. Uh, yes, it that's was. That's because we had one format originally, and that was it was Whitney looking confused or kind of like this, and then me like ponderously looking at the camera, right? So we had two. So we had the okay. one that, that was the two frames. It was Whitney looking confused in you. It was the two-frame situation, and then we had the one... That was your, uh, I think it was an original Yam Cam. Yeah. Like live stream thing. It was the live stream thumbnail for the Yam Cam where I'm just looking at the camera and I have my mustache and I'm smiling. Very <laughs> memeable. Yes. And they started with that one. However, I didn't realize the meme contest was going on. And then you put up a video on YouTube and in the back end, the thumbnail was hilarious. It was you holding a small cup of yellow liquid and going like, <laughs> this which is just rife for memes and people remix them and put them together and i'm i'm so excited to see what we came up with yeah it's we got so many entries that whitney was like we need to include more so we have a solid 12 i believe in the actual contest and then we have some honorable mentions awesome here so uh we're gonna dive right in with Lil foozy burt all right, Lil Fousey Burt here says, needing a new format for the meme contest, yam, someone's slapping it, and then mustache. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly think for his, for the little time I had the mustache, it's gonna there's just going to be so many memes from it, honestly. Yes. Um, I'm actually really happy that I got so much content with me of the mustache. <laughs> <laughs> it was really just for fun. Ah, come on, surface. There we go. It's okay. begging for death, dude. This is the last day. You Just one more day. This is just 30 more minutes. You got it. <laughs> So, for Lil Fousey Burt, quality and funniness. Quality here, I would give it uh, a six and a half. Six and a half. And I just realized that this is not going to sum out. So, Oh, it is. It is. Smart. Nice. <laughs> I did this last night at like 1030. I was half asleep <laughs> when I did it. Funniness, I would rate it how about a seven. A seven. Pretty funny. I agree. Solid start. 13 and a half for Lil Fousey Burt. Now we've got Orange 990. Oh, good grief. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, we might have to make that a little bit bigger. I can't see what's going on here. There are so many different... Um, so, it's me, Smile with the Mustache, says, gets a Discord notification, then it's me screaming at Toaster, and then Tube with his mustache back in action, <laughs> uh, me with the Busa, some some NFTs, some furry stuff, you looking at the KLR, uh, and then it's just me saying, what the hell is going on? <laughs> That is sort yeah, of the honestly, energy that, of the Discord. That kind of just sums up the Discord, yeah. So, 
if you watched earlier and I said, yeah, join up, it's a lot of fun, this is basically what's going on in there. It is a lot of fun, but it is extraordinarily chaotic. (laughs) (laughs) All the way down to the furry content. Yeah, yeah, I I wish y'all wouldn't do that, but you do. (laughs) I've siloed you into the anime channel. If I start seeing it outside of the anime channel, I'm going to get upset. Keep the furry content in the anime channel. That's the f***ing <laughs> sums up the Discord right there, right? <laughs> Join the anime Discord server. For God's sakes, guys, keep the furry stuff in the anime channel. You <laughs> uh, uh, That's good. Yeah. Uh, orange 990 quality. Pretty good quality, honestly. I think a seven I like and a that. half. This is good. Yeah. Uh, and funniness. I think uh, a seven for the funniness. A seven. That yeah. is 14 and a half. Nice. New leader. Uh, Oyster Cracker is next. Oyster with... Cracker here. It says, look, they just want a weekly meme contest, and it's that simple. And then I'm looking confused, saying trivia, terivia, trisha, text to go go. Huh. What's going on here? Probably. Uh goofing on us for not having meme contests every week <laughs> yeah i think it was just kind of like burning out a little bit we yeah. want to try something a little different you know yeah it the the reason why we don't do the meme contest every week is we want to keep them special keep them special keep them fresh yeah because as we know here because we work creatively if you keep doing the same thing over and over and over again eventually the quality does go down yes it does we saw it down. with the memes yep unfortunately y'all weren't y'all we're, weren't hitting it over the fence every single time bringing the heat uh so four Oyster Cracker here. Quality. I'm going to give it a five. It's five. Text on screen. Very simple. And funniness. Uh, more of a co- more of a social meme commentary rather than a funny meme. So I think a yes, four. A four. Uh, the irony of the one dunking on the meme contest <laughs> currently bringing up the rear. <laughs> it's almost uh, like we hold all the power here. <laughs> Stacy the Death Star is next with this one. All right, I'm gonna make one of, make that a little bit bigger. Yes, <laughs> this is pretty good. Um, so this is the one of you at the top holding the brake fluid. I use the catheter like Zach and Ari on my iron button. And Whitney says, "Dude, why didn't you just pull over and go to the restroom?" And I say, "Yeah, man, what the hell is wrong with you?" And then me, <laughs> can I smell that? <laughs> <laughs> nice, very nice use of all the memes. That's pretty good. Completely combined everything. Yeah, I like that. Um. Yeah, that photo of me down there with that mustache definitely does have that energy. It is unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> it was just the screen grab for the yam cam, but it is what it is, you know. Uh, Stacy the Death Star, quality here. Quality's pretty good. It kind of mismatched all the memes together. I want to give it a seven. A seven. Yeah, good quality. And funniness. Pretty funny. I think a seven and a half. Seven and a half. Yeah. That is going to be a 14 and a half. We now have a tie for first. All right. Z Fang is next with Z Fang here. Uh, at the top, it's the meme from uh, West Coast Chopper. It says brub 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 brub, and then I say Ducati biscotti, and then they body slam me like the chair. <laughs> <laughs> Again, we made that video. Uh, Ducati guys and Harley guys don't want to admit it, but they're, they're the same thing. They're the same damn thing. Same damn thing. That was a fun video. Yeah, I don't think I got anything for views, but. It was good. Yeah. Uh, for Z Fang here, quality. Uh, quality here. A little Photoshop job and some stuff together. How about a how about a six? A six. How about a six. And funniness. Mm, reasonably funny. How about a five and a half? A five and a half. Whoops, that was a period. Five and a half. There we go. Uh, Captain Destructo with Captain Destructo. This is brilliant. Looking at a, a guy on a ZH two. And then I'm saying, but I like this with a bunch of triumphs. That is a just the, the proportion of your the, arm yeah, that not, there is just. I'm like Slender Man. <laughs> my, <laughs> like, hand, my hand is like as big as my entire chest. Very, yeah. very odd. Definitely not my hand. <laughs> uh, interesting. It's, like, it's kind of like the Jeremy Clarkson meme, yeah? Yeah. The only thing, though, is that is this, the bobber. And I don't Is know it? That, yeah, those are those are all a line of bobbers. No, that's not what I like. Mm-mm. Nope. I wonder. We should. And honestly, I love the ZH two. Everyone knows that. We should for the for one of the new giveaway bikes that we can't talk about. Bobber comparison. Yeah, definitely. I think that would do well. Definitely. Uh, Captain Destructo quality. 
A little Photoshop job, pretty good. How about a five and a half? A five and a half. And funniness. Funniness. Mm. Eh, five. A five. Yeah. Middle of the road. Uh, Detlaf is next. Detlaf says, me explaining why the Turbo Boost is the best <laughs> beginner bike. This is the cashier at Burger King. <laughs> 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 So that's really good. <laughs> <laughs> this reminds me of a, a green text meme I saw on the Discord that was uh, this guy talking about how he worked this job where he, he it was like a night shift with this other guy. And he's like, dude, this other guy like never shut the f up about motorcycles. He's like, every f***ing day it was about like what parts on these bikes and these mods and these different models and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, and I come to find out that this motherfucker only rode a motorcycle once. He didn't even own a fucking motorcycle. He's like, this guy wasted my life talking about bikes, and he didn't even fucking ride. And the only thing I could think of was, I was like, yeah, that's the average Amnoob commenter. Yep, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> like, you don't even own a bike, and you're just like, yeah, the MT-07, yeah, the SV650. <laughs> this is great, though. Simple I really execution, like this one. but very funny. <laughs> <laughs> that is excellent uh, yeah. quality here. It's very simple quality, so I think it's I think a five and a half. Yep, but the funniness is funniness up there. is eight and a half. Yeah, yeah, I had a very good chuckle from that. <laughs> that is a solid fourteen right there. <laughs> uh, Full Metal Corgi is next. This ought to be good. Nice <laughs> Full Metal Corgi here with the Giga Chad tits, ass, and then feet in Comic Sans. In Comic Sans font. <laughs> 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 yep. Yeah. yeah, that's that's fair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, that's good. That's very good. All right, quality here. Quality here, I think, is a six. A six. Simple little Photoshop situation. And funniness. Pretty funny. Seven and a half. I'm gonna Seven give and it. a half. Good chuckle. Well done. Thirteen and a half. Next up is Hex Forever. Hex Forever. X Forever says, just because they have an exhaust doesn't mean you have to rev it at every stop. And then me looking all confused and say, that's literally the whole point. <laughs> Pretty much. Basically, yeah. yeah. It's funny the Harley riders get that rep because any bike that I'm on, if it has an exhaust, if I'm on a stoplight, I'm doing a little bit. I'm like, mm -hmm. no, let me hear it, let me hear it a little bit. I'm not dropping rev bombs. That's annoying, but I do I do hear a little bit. Yeah. Got a brap. Got a brap, dude. Uh, Quality. Text on screen, pretty simple. How about a five and a half? Five and a half. Yeah. Funniness. Mm, reasonable. How about a Six? Six? How about a five? A five. <laughs> yeah, that that felt a little. How about if I was like a nine? Hilarious. And you're like, no. Uh, a ninja apple. A ninja apple. Next. When your dad bike comes with its own catheter, and you're just looking all happy at your own little piss there. <laughs> yep. Yep. Pretty solid. Pretty funny. Yep. Yeah. Uh, quality. Text on screen, pretty simple. Not even remixing any of the other ones. How about a five? A five. Yeah. And funniness. I think a five and a half. A five and a half. Yeah. Magic Toaster is next. Magic Toaster. Gonna have some electric bike bullshit. <laughs> Magic Toaster here says, No, you can't grow a mustache. The fans will hate it. And it says, Nonsense. I have not yet begun to defile myself. And I say, Brother, mustache is cool. And then that guy says, yes. Now, I believe this is a deep cut meme. I think this yes, is Val is. Kilmer. Yes, it is. And this is the, 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 there's a reaction gif that all the time is being posted on Discord. And I have no understanding why. Yeah. It's Val Kilmer saying, nonsense. I have not yet become to begun to defile myself. I don't know why they keep posting it. It's for anything and everything. They just, they just keep, they're just like, yep, copy, paste, copy, paste. Yep, yep. I, I bet your Magic Toaster just has a bot to do that at this point. Probably, yeah. Uh, so for Magic Toaster here, quality. Quality. He did Photoshop Val Kilmer onto my head, which is I think he probably has just a used like an app deep or something. Fake app, yeah. Probably, yeah. Um, let's give it a six. A six. A six. And funniness. Eh, unless you know like Discord deep lore, and even then, it's not even that funny. How about a five? <laughs> Man, just <laughs> savage right there. <laughs> uh, this is P. Murray is last up in our Actual contest segment. Content. Yes. P. Murray says, uh, I don't need more than 40 horsepower medicine dripping all the way down, all the way to you and collecting it like the sweet <laughs> syrup that you need. 
Oh, the KLR makes more than that, right? No. It makes 40 horsepower? It makes 39 horsepower, <laughs> dude. <laughs> 39? Yeah. Whoa, we got we, we got to put it on a dyno. I got to see what it makes measured at the wheel. It That's makes like hilarious. 39 horsepower and 40 foot pounds of torque. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Them's is Harley numbers. Them's is Royal Enfield numbers. <laughs> They're bad on the wow, KLR. Man. Wow. It's it's properly slow. Yeah. I got to ride it one of these days. Um <laughs> This is interesting. Creative. I like it. Yep. Yeah. Uh quality quality and kind of creativity i'll give this one a six and a half it's kind of different kind of kind of good a six and a half and then funniness i think a six i got a decent chuckle but nothing crazy yep so before we move on to the honorable mentions let's sort out our winners all right so it looks like we've got 14 and a half and 14 and a half yeah, we've got so a, we tie a tie between for orange first and stacy to death star all right let's pull those back up Orange was our number two. This is Discord Deep Lore here. Discord Deep Lore notification. And then what was Stacy the Death Star? I think it's got to go to Stacy the Death Star. I think so too. Yeah, I like the story here. It's a little more compelling. It's quite funny. Yeah. Good, good, well, yeah. It's, and it used all of them. Used all of them, which is really impressive. Yeah. So we're going to give one. first to Stacy the Death Star here. Yep. Second, then, would go to Orange. Orange. Now, third is going to be a tie between Lil Fousey Burt and Full Metal Corgi. It Full seems. Metal Corgi. No, no, no. We got we got Det Laugh at, at 14. 14. That's yep. third place. That's a solid third. That, that was one was the, the one we laughed the hardest at. Yes, that was the Burger King meme, I think. <laughs> yep. That was hilarious. Uh, solid effort there. Yes, and solid, solid effort. Nobody's on cooldown or nothing. It's been a while no, it's since been the a minute. contest. So all, everybody's going to get their prizes. You got yep. gift cards and merch and whatever else we come up with. Y'all get Flying some fun eyes, stuff. Sunglasses. Some sunglasses, some good stuff there. Now let's check the honorable mentions. Let's check the uh, honorable mentions. The honorable mentions. First off, we have DGI. All right, DGI <laughs> says, is this a Ninja 400? And it's a toilet. And it says, oh my God, yes, it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and I love I love that I'm in like some like little Instagrammable bathroom or something. It must be part of the original decor. Yeah, I thought that was part of the meme. Part there. of the meme, yeah. That should have been something. That's should, a, that should have been. A, it's a perfect uh, perfect uh, execution there. If it would have been, um, I love it. That's funny. Yeah, good good uh, yammy new meme right there. How do we want to rate that one up? I figure we rate these just and giggles. Okay, uh, quality here. I would give it a six. A six. And then funniness, a six and a half. Six and a half. Yeah, pretty good. And Lorcus Porcus. Sometimes I don't even remember typing this crap. <laughs> like, I don't. Yeah. Like, I, I, I type that into the sheet. And I don't remember <laughs> what these people's names are. I'm sorry. <laughs> so Lorcus Porcus has a Valentino Rossi, uh, some sort of spirit. I don't know what that is. And then it's Gooch Juice. He Gooch Juice. put it on there. I did not know Valentino um, had his own thing. His own. I might, it's is it, not. It's, it's not. Carlo Rossi. Ah, uh, and he made it say Valentino. I see. Yeah. I see. I see. Well, um, that's pretty good. Valentino Rossi Gooch Juice. Distilled. Refined. Didn't understand the homework assignment, though. Did not, though. Totally different meme. This is pretty good. <laughs> uh, so let's give it a five and a five. A five and a five. You know, didn't understand the assignment. Uh, full Metal Corgi. In meme contest pass, we would have doled out double zeros, but that seems a little brutal right this now. This is the honorable mention. It's honorable mention. We don't need to kick them while they're down. <laughs> and then that came back around and says, who would even buy this? The Valentino Rossi Gooch Juice. And it says, the Discord boys. <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh, yeah, they probably would. Uh, for Full Metal Corgi as here. As disgusting as it sounds, I feel like if we were to sell used pieces of gear, oh, dude, people no. would buy it. You remember uh, Belle Delphine actually got in trouble with uh because she was shipping a biohazard yeah it was like bioterrorism yeah <laughs> yeah um so for full metal corgi here uh i think the quality here's i was gonna say another five and a, a five, five and honestly, a five yeah. yeah it's too in jokey um yeah. x2 is next x2 a rare meme maker doesn't make them that often <laughs> it says me explaining how I plan on riding after my latest cla crash. And it's people who don't ride, and then it's people who ride. Just smiling and be like, yup. Yup. <laughs> that's very true. When you talk, talk to people about your crashes on your motorcycle and stuff, non riders are like, oh my God, that's crazy. And then people ride are like, yeah. Mm hmm. It happens. I'm going to get back on the bike, though. Yup. Uh, 4X2 here. Uh, quality here, I'd say pretty middle of the road. Five and a half, because we used three of the memes. Yup. And funniness. I think, of, I think another five and a half. A yeah. Five and a half. 
Uh, Kagamizen rounds us out today with our last entry. Kagamizen here he says what new riders think bike night looks like, and it says what bike night actually looks like. Uh, so the one at the top is like people, you know, kind of debating the bike, and the bike night is just people looking confused at it. Maybe I think it's probably like what people what people think bike night is, and they're like, yeah, it's cool and good, and then like this is the reaction is like, oh yeah, this is something that's cool. And then your face is like, uh, is it really though? Kind of thing. Mm. I don't know. I'm trying to interpret this, which means yeah, it did not hit. Did not hit. If you have to interpret the meme and it wasn't immediately understandable. Nope. Not nope. a good meme. <laughs> Sorry, Kaga Mizen. Sorry, Kaga. Uh, uh, so I think, uh, I think a five and a five. A five one. and a five. Yep. Middle of the road for the honorable mentions. Yeah. If it was, if it was in, in the proper contest, Oof, we would have flayed you a lot. <laughs> <laughs> But you're just an honorable mention. All right, boys, that's going to wrap up the Yamcast. Thanks so much for hanging out all the way through. Remember, if you love what you're seeing here, want to join us up, go to yamanoob.co. It's a fun way to join what we're doing. We'll catch you on the next one. See you later.